welcome to this coffee break session. Uh, my name is John Williams. I'm with the Agile Business Consortium and I am joined of course today by Vikram Jain who is founder of J-Curve and we're going to have 30 minutes of um, in insight and information I think really. Um, we are we are living in in a time of enforced agility that's probably the best way to describe it i think really and as a result of that um, leadership styles inevitably have changed we do lots more delegation we do it much faster we've got the challenges of remote working both the communications challenges uh, and the mental health challenges that come with remote working and as i think as either as leadership figures by status or leadership figures by function which we all are the question we need to keep asking is what does next look like it can't look the same as now and it also should not look the same as back then actually because we need to move forward so today we're going to discuss some of the benefits that we can take from now into the future um, and see whether or not it gels with what you think Vikram over to you sir to start us off all right well first of all um, thanks for everyone for joining um, and just building on what John was saying, we hope that it's not a, this is not just a one-way thing. Um, we're going to do some interactive session as well. So hopefully we get to hear from you uh, to have that discussion. Um, just worthwhile, just a couple of weeks ago, we ran our quarterly kind of heads of transformation session. And what we have is about 25 different uh, companies representative. Each one of those is uh, head of transformation for an agile, agile transformation program. And it was really fascinating that the, the theme that we uh, put to the team was all about what are the learnings we can take away from this kind of COVID situation, which will make agile and ways of working stronger as we kind of get out of lockdown, which is hopefully coming sooner rather than later. And uh, I thought what would be worthwhile is just sharing a couple of the um, themes which came out of that discussion. These are all, by the way, kind of people who are at Exco level or one minus Exco level. So they had a good, uh, a good representation of their particular organizations. And, and what we look to do is I'm going to share some of the, the feedback they provided or some, some of their perspectives. And then it'd be great to kind of hear from you about what you think uh, some of those learnings are going to be as well. So what was, what was really fascinating about this is um, when we asked them about, you know, so what are, the, what are the implications been of COVID on your agile ways of working as an organization? Um, the one big theme which came through was actually it has had a positive side effect on the whole. And it'd be interesting to get your views on whether that's the same in your organizations. But what they were saying is that they've seen, you know, one, uh, it's actually by default encouraged agile ways of working. Naturally, you know, you're a lot, lot more prioritized, a lot more focused. You know, teams are almost uh, being forced to work in time boxes to respond to weekly, daily challenges, etc. But what was quite interesting is that there were really great examples of how this, the new way of working, which they've been almost enforced to use, um, has actually resulted in many examples of being able to deliver faster, being more efficient, being more adaptive. And, you know, as an example, one of our, one of our clients was saying that, you know, they've been trying to do this kind of data integration for over two years. And because of having one prioritized focus, one common person making decisions, it's taken only two weeks to do something which has not worked in two years. So there's lots of examples like that, which has result, you know, obviously resulted in demonstrating the value of agile principles. Um, the other interesting thing I think they were saying is that their peer group have noticeably uh, adjusted their management style. And they were saying that, you know, they've definitely observed that material change in leadership style, being that they're more open to delegate, empower, uh, trust their teams. Um, and obviously there's some cheeky comments that even they can use technology and they were seeing some kind of uh, Exco members similar to, I see Sue Slater, I'm just picking on you, but I can see, you know, you, you got your background. They were seeing some executives actually even fiddling around with their background. So clearly that it's it positively impacted even their, their IT literacy. Uh, and obviously one other thing, which I know is really challenging is that they've almost got better at prioritizing just those few things and doing them really well as well. So that was, and I'm sure you all appreciate, you know, if you read lots of text and lots of the surveys coming out over the last few years, you know, leadership has always been one of the biggest challenges to overcome when trying to embed agile ways of working. And it was really heartening to see as a byproduct of this that we've seen a step change in their behaviors as well. 
The other things, obviously, you know, from a broader team and organizational perspective is that they've seen greater levels of collaboration, focus, uh, cross-functional working, because it's forced people to do that and flatten the hierarchy. And um, we've had another uh, client talk about the fact that Teams, Microsoft Teams or any uh, tool, I guess, has helped flatten all of the hierarchy which would have existed when they had geographies, offices, all kind of at different levels of the hierarchy. Now everyone's the same. They all turn up to the same meetings and everyone can speak equally. Whereas before, you know, being on the end of a spider phone on a conference call, some people could hear, some people couldn't hear. It was obviously dominated by the people in the particular office as well. So there's some lots of great benefits, I think, from the, from the teams. And they were just saying that, you know, that, that a lot of the agile ways of working have been embedded more broadly. They're doing the regular stand-ups and check-ins, whether that's around a business challenge or whether that's even just checking in on a, how's everyone feeling today? So there's a lot of really great benefits, which people mentioned. Um, has resulted from that COVID crisis, which is, you know, it's really nice to hear some positives coming out of this, uh, this situation. So that was kind of one big theme, really. So really nice, positive byproducts. Um, again, it'll be interesting to hear kind of what you guys think in a second. Um, the second uh, theme, however, was that, you know, there were obviously some observed challenges from an agile perspective from remote working. Um, the lack, lack of face-to-face -face time, People were mentioning that you know, there are some challenges about having you know, tough conversations or sensitive conversations, that it's just a bit, people were saying it's just a bit harder when you're trying to coach and have you know, conversations with your, with your team members uh, when you're doing it just purely uh, on a, in a virtual setting. People were saying maybe that's just something they've just got to get used to. Um, obviously, people's mental health, they were saying it's just people being able to manage and monitor how people are feeling uh, and I'm sure you've probably, probably experienced this as well, is that that's been quite challenging and the stand-ups and things have really kind of helped to kind of do, address some of those challenges. Um, and even kind of pro productivity in some organizations, again, depending on where the organization started from, some of the organizations in our network were saying that, you know, we started from a, a low base that not very people were allowed to even work from home. You know, from a company culture, it was very dominated by, you know, you have to be in, that's the way it needs to be done, done around here. So they've suffered kind of productivity reductions because people just weren't, didn't have the technology to even work from home uh, or the laptops in, in some cases as well. Um, but what, what, so it was, again, so we finished this conversation with these uh, executives and then we said, okay, so what are the things that we want to, you, you take away? Because obviously there's lots of positives here over, over, over kind of overwhelming the negatives. What are the things that you're going to take away from this particular period in our kind of lives, which is going to make agile ways of working stronger. And what, what was really fascinating is what came through really strongly uh, in terms of what's the one thing that they think thought was useful to do is, and this is almost like it came as a fear, really. They feared that we would basically go back to where we started from pre-COVID. Yeah. So, and, and this is, I don't know whether I should say worrying, but you know, these are leaders, leaders of organizations. And they were saying that there is a danger that taking away all the great stuff which has happened, that we end up making a retrograde step back, that, you know, the leaders go back to BAU again and say, you know, maybe less delegating, less kind of empowerment, less, more control, et cetera. Um, you know, and it's almost forgetting all of these great learnings and uh, not applying them and baking them into the, the new normal uh, as we go forward. So that was kind of an interesting one. And, you know, we were like, well, why, why do you think that's a risk? And I think a lot of people were saying that at the moment, we just don't have the time to learn and reflect and do that true retrospective and bake that into the, the new corporate kind of change DNA type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's, in, so, sorry, Vikram, carry on. I, I, would, I was going to say something. I'll wait, I'll, I'll wait until you're done because some interesting things out of that. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, it was probably, I was going to finish my rambling anyway. So <laughs> please go ahead. Great. This is what you should do as a host. Always interrupt your main speaker. Okay. Um, right. So um, the two things really stood out from what you said there. The first one was this idea about um, the hierarchy being flattened. I mentioned earlier on about, you know, we're all leaders, actually, all of us, whether it's by title or status or, or function in actual fact. And I think, yeah, I, I, certainly I see this in, in the organizations I, I talk to, that people are, um, it's not just enforced agility, it's almost enforced leadership people are being required to make decisions at every level now that would normally have been pushed upwards to other people because of the pace of that decision requirement and and also because of the sort of implicit 
freedom, the implicit autonomy that comes with being uh, remote from, from the head office. The second thing that comes over quite strongly is that bit about hard conversations about the way that we talk to members of our teams and particularly those where we need to have difficult conversations. And you mentioned the idea that quite a lot of people thought that that's just something we might have to get used to. Actually, I don't think it's possible to just get used to that because hard conversations are already difficult, even in a quote unquote perfect situation where we're face to face, where we've got all of the context and stuff. They are even more difficult in a screen to screen conversation. And I think actually there'll be a significant requirement for a different kind of leadership behavior in hard conversations, which are screen to screen. Um, and I'd be interested in knowing what, what everybody else thinks about that. And certainly um, what you think about that, Vikram. Yeah, um, I mean, so, so yes, yeah, so there's a lot of points there, John. I mean, in terms of um, those, those hard conversations, I think part of it is just the learning the mindset of learning how to use and operate within a kind of virtual context. Um, you know, and I, as I said, some organizations have taken it on really well. Some of the leaders I know who are operating in a, a virtual world, you know, let's just take some of the large oil and gas firms that we're working with. They're very much used to kind of working in different countries and having disparate teams. The companies which have really struggled are the ones which are co-located uh, one single country and they've been able to kind of, you know, I think that's where they've really struggled because they're just not used to that type of working. Um, so I, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure lots of people on this call are used to working in a virtual way. Um, and I think it's something which just needs to be almost developed as a muscle, really. Um, and, and new techniques to kind of learn in, in, in order to respond. So actually, that's an opportunity there for learn from the way that other people do it already. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, you know, connecting back to the, the, the output of this session that we ran is that, you know, the, 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 the real interesting one is that will we learn and will we have the time to learn and again, looking at our community online here, you know, what's our role in, you know, and I think I'll take it accountability of this as well. You know, what, what's our role in this process to encourage our businesses and clients and organizations to learn uh, from the crisis and be actually be stronger as we go, as we come out of it and not just default back to, you know, this is just, let's just go back to where we were because that was great. Because Excellent. I think there are some genuinely great things which have happened in the last couple of months, you know. Um, so, um, what I would love to hear now is from you. Uh, and um, we're, gonna, we're, we're doing this as a, um, I think we use poll, polls quite a lot, but uh, this one's gonna be a bit exper experimental because we've got quite a lot of people on there. Um, but I'm just gonna quickly hand over to Pyle. Pyle's gonna run a poll where we'd love to hear from you about what you, what you would suggest as some of the, the biggest takeaways from the crisis, which will actually help Agile be even stronger as we come out. Morning everyone. So just in the chat functionality, I've shared a link um, to the poll. So if you click on that. Um, so the question is, what learnings um, can we take from this period that will make Agile more effective coming out of lockdown? And obviously we've heard from Vikram in terms of some of the themes that leaders were reflecting on, but um, we wanted to really get your reflection. So if you could focus on maybe your top learning and kind of type it into the poll, um, I'm going to give you kind of around 90 seconds to just get that done. And then we're going to go into a vote to see which ones, you know, we most resonate with. So you've got not about 90 seconds starting now. Try not to vote just yet. We're going to do the voting in a minute. <laughs> you can vote. For, someone's voted for themselves already, I reckon. <laughs> And obviously what we'll do is when we finish the session, we should share that with everyone. We share the data with everyone here, um, obviously anonymized, but I think it, hopefully it's fascinating for, for you to take back to your uh, respective organizations. Got about 30 seconds left. For those people who are just joining, I think a few people have just joined. We're running a, a, po a poll. So on your chat, you should see a link. Uh, and what we're asking is what learnings can we take away from this period of COVID, um, you know, where we've obviously been encouraged to work remotely, et cetera, that we can take uh, to improve agile ways of working as we come out of lockdown. Okay, so once you've um, put your kind of top learning in, um, look at all the other comments. Um, you've all got five votes. So, um, you know, kind of um, 
yeah, be, be really strict with them, but vote for the, the topics and themes that you kind of most resonate with. And I'll give you a minute or so to, to work through that. And votes being thumbs up in this case. Yeah. And you can obviously see, you know, the live movement on screen now as to, um, you know, what's getting the most votes. Mm -hmm. Okay, about uh, 20 more seconds. Oh, the votes are moving at pace now. <laughs> so, Vikram and John, some clear themes coming out at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unsurprisingly, I think um, really the um, the point that, that Vikram made right at the start, I think really, which is about this, you know, thinking about agile ways of working, this is um, uh, enforced agility means that we haven't any choice but to open our minds, I think, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting to see trust coming up so powerfully there. That's excellent. Yeah. There's a couple of link points, isn't there, in terms of trust, empowerment. Yep. Okay, so I think our time's up for voting, but um, yeah, Vikram, John, do you want to comment on some of your reflections on the top themes? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I mean, I think it's essentially a lot of the, the, the big themes, things are still moving, but I mean, Tr the trust in people thing. I mean, as I said, I mean, I'm sure you've experienced it. The leaders or well, the organizations have had to almost let go um, because they've got so much to do. And obviously they can't see the people, you know, they've been working with previously, you know, so there has to be increased amounts of uh, trust and empowerment, um, which is ge genuinely a good theme here. I guess the, I guess the challenge is that how, how, it, how do you, get the leaders to uh, almost uh, consciously consider these these challenges and consciously do something about it when the world's going at a thousand miles an hour still uh, and they you know the danger is that they just pop out and do go back to usual really yeah so, i think that the, the crucial thing there is around the the, the trust but the trust is is in in practical terms is a is a delegation it's a devolution of authority yeah really in, in, inside an organization and I would be it would be a great disappointment I think for that to be clawed back by leadership teams as we start to unwind what we're going through at the moment uh, and it would be interesting to get some discussion underway uh, I don't mean right now but generally around how do we preclude this idea of just okay you've had a good run right now I'm in charge again um, to, to to take it to extreme lengths and actually just allow people to continue being and delivering in a trusted way. It'd be interesting to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it, does, um, it does kind of almost say here that, you know, that is there an opportunity of running, you know, specific, you know, sessions, you know, again, your, the community here, is it right to run specific retrospective sessions with the leadership team, with uh, the organizations that you're working in kind of doing something similar as an exercise and then pulling out whether there are gaps, what needs to be strengthened uh, in order to embed. For example, there's obviously a lot of you have mentioned about trust, trust and empowered staff, you know, so is there an intervention almost that you could run on training people how to, in a structured way, uh, you know, empower their people and be empowered as well? You know, maybe that's something just to embed that the new way of working rather than just I just assume that it it, it uh, is just going to stick around anyway. Um, yeah, maybe there's a thought that the you mentioned the word retrospective, uh, Vikram. That maybe this idea of doing retrospectives periodically through this process, um, which is probably going to be easier to persuade uh, otherwise paranoid leadership teams um, if we wait until the end. Um, periodically have retrospectives, that basically say, look, how are we doing? Look how well we're doing in a lot of ways actually it's, you know, we're not falling over because you trusted people and stuff like that so there's maybe a, a an engagement process that could be done with some leadership teams and it'd be interesting to hear from from our audience um you know either chat or by email or whatever um whether they think within their organizations um this there'll be a drift back towards what was rather than maintaining what we've got yeah so yeah put it on the chats if uh, if you think that's the case well, I'm actually um, come up live uh, instead of a chat, but uh, just yeah. uh, some organizations really do admire the, 
the fact that people started to to work on the lever, even if they were remotely working now and have a, have a challenges on the you know house, household challenges, I would call it this way. Uh, but I also know from my colleagues there are some organizations this trust element has literally failed the organization. It was it is very visible from from the behavior of the top and senior management. They did not trust people working from home and they actually want people to go back to the office as soon as possible and keep the old model uh, still uh, ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, I wonder um, whether that, that particular organization reckon, I mean, have they seen a benefit from people working remotely or, or, they, or has it actually been, have they seen it as being detrimental? Well, I, I guess in, in case of my organization, it, it literally proves that people can work and can work effectively and efficiently from, from where they are, wherever they are. They can go to the moon if they have the battery Wi-Fi and the, and, the, and the oxygen, they can still deliver the work. Um, mm -hmm. My colleagues, some of them report say, look, we were just forced back to the office like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And because of the rules, sanitary rules in place, we were unable to cooperate, we were unable to operate. We were unable to coordinate things and we ended up sitting in the office just you know distanced from each other for the whole day without really effective delivery for for the works we were doing and we're so much more efficient and effective when we we're back working from home so mm -hmm. it's um thank, thank you for that um there's a brilliant note from amy um i'm not sure amy if you want to uh, unmute perhaps we'd love to kind of hear yeah i'm sure that's very valuable for everyone else to hear what you're doing uh, and that kind of looks like you've done retrospectives, you're doing that continuous improvement. Yeah, so um, I, I mean, it's not really retrospective. It's sort of, um, we're sort of collecting data as we go along, actually. So at the end of each Zoom call uh, with a patient service user, we're looking to understand um, their experience of, of what that's been like to have therapy or other types of therapeutic services delivered to them in a virtual way which would have been otherwise face to face yeah and and just the i think the key point there is that um it's it's being endorsed at a sort of organizational level and is being sort of really encouraged by our senior management okay and why do you think that is you know what, what's what's kind of what's the reason for why they're bought into that well i think obviously um sort of our patient experience comes first um, and even though we don't have other options right now other than to deliver services virtually I think it's really important sort of across the trust that I work in that we we understand what the experience is like right now but not um, but also for staff as well um, so we can understand what what what's working and what's not working and and how we might actually sustain some of the changes in future um, when we go to some sort of back to some level yeah, yeah, yeah. See what that looks like yeah and um, alex clark you mentioned that um, social distancing means that office capacity will be cut and what has been interesting um we've seen a few organizations start to consider their office capacity as you say um one law firm for example that we've been working with they've actually already moved floors um they've down uh, scales their office and now what they've, they've determined is that their office is going to be used for like majority of work is going to be done where you need to be collaborative and work together, but then they're going to encourage most people to work from home um, beyond that, which is really fascinating. You'd never have thought, you know, I went to a conference only two years ago where law firms were deemed as 20 years behind any other industry in terms of modern ways of working. Um, so that, that's a real radical change. And we're seeing a few other clients doing the same thing, which is absolutely fascinating, really. Uh, um, Vikram, uh, of course our 30 minutes of insight and information has gone to pot because we'll get a lot more than that out of this one I think possibly um, but it yeah. might be worth um, just um, moving on a bit I think yeah okay um, uh, brilliant and I think there's, it was nice to see that there's other comments coming through around uh, leadership in the organization expressed earlier that the crisis has been a catalyst for long-term changes and you know we've um, kind of our biggest mantra I guess is that we should never waste a crisis in a way you know, there's plenty of opportunities to, to learn and improve. And I think what you guys have highlighted here is that there's, there's plenty of positives uh, we can take away from uh, this COVID crisis. Um, I guess the challenge I put to everyone is that what's our role or what can you do to ensure that your organizations are going to genuinely take the time out to, uh, to, to review what's worked, what hasn't worked, uh, and then obviously bake in those changes as you go forward. Yeah, so I'd say that that's kind of 
a challenge that I put, you know, for us, for my organization and for all of you guys is that how do we actually kind of try and free up some time for our respective teams, leaders, et cetera, to actually genuinely do a retrospective of the last few months and say, what are we going to do genuinely different as a result of all of this, rather than just, you know, just quickly slide fluidly back into the kind of the, the, the kind of the old approaches. Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, Vikram, did you want to do, um, uh, anything else substantive before we wrap up this half an hour? Because this is this is going to run, I think, over and over and over. We should be doing this. I think there's a lot of a lot of depth in this. That puts pressure on me. Um, I'm not sure if I've got anything else substantive. I've never had anything substantive in my life, anyway. <laughs> No, no, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's very interesting because the, um, I mean, what's coming out of this is the, the when we look at the topics there, the way the people have respond, responded to the topics, um, I get the feeling that our audience is of, uh, not quite of one mind, but is actually able to see clearly the opportunities that we've got out of this uh, and might be very interested in, in working together because we are, yeah, we are a community in doing what you've just suggested, which is helping those leaderships who might be tempted to drift back to avoid going into that sort of thing. And I think um, one of the follow-ups that we can do from this, first of all, is uh, probably to arrange another conversation, which is not too far distant from the one that we've just had, maybe a little bit deeper in certain directions. And the other one is actually to see, is there a um, an opportunity from the community that we're talking with at the moment to do some actual work with some of those leadership teams because I think that would be a very interesting mm. um, exercise. Okay this um, in a sense I, I feel terrible having to leave this conversation now because there's so much still in it however we will come back to it we will come back to it um, and just to see whether or not you will come back to it um, I'm going to run a little poll as well which is basically which just says um, I'm launching it. Would you recommend this episode to a friend or colleague? Um, in other words, was that interesting for you? So it should be live now and feel free to vote. To vote. Um, uh, no money has changed hands in the course of uh, this voting <laughs> at all. But it, it, I think what's important here, and if I can say this, Rick, the, the quality of the insights that you've given us from the work that you've done with leadership teams is vital in two ways. First of all, it gives us a feeling for what leadership teams think and feel and how they behave and, and why they behave the way they do. And secondly, actually, it demonstrates whether or not our thinking is aligned with those leadership teams as well. And I think that's really, really important and open up opportunities for us so we've had some votes thank you very much indeed for those people who have voted um, I'll leave the polling open for the moment uh, we've got about one minute left to go during which I will simply say thank you very much actually to Vikram uh, uh, and to the rest of the J-Curve team for the insights that they provided to us here. Thank you all for the time that you've spent listening to us and watching us talk. And particularly thank you to those people um, who actually spoke, Jed and, and Amy in particular, thank you. Um, and we will hope to see you again on the 24th of June. And if you've got ideas for topics that we can cover on the 24th of June, if it's not the same one as today, let us know, please. I'm going to end the poll now and I'm going to say thank you very much indeed to everybody for joining in. And I would quite like, let's have a look, see, there's the poll results. I would quite like to see you all again on the 24th of June. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Thanks, and bye, bye for now. Bye.